Grant proposal. What is that? So, I will tell you what is a grant proposal, how to write a very good grant proposal, how to respond to a funding call and what is this funding call and also towards the end I will explain some tips, some secret tips, don't tell anyone, that, uh, that will increase the chance of you, your proposal getting uh, money from a funding agency. Okay. Grant proposal is nothing but writing a proposal and submitting into a funding agency in order to get money. And this money is needed for everything. For doing a research and for publication also money is needed. And nowadays the trend is even if the journal is having a very good impact factor and in a very good index journal, they are asking for publication charges. And uh, they are giving the material free of cost to the reader. So in order to get the money, you have to convince the funding agency that your topic is exciting and worthy to receive money. It is their money, so they should be convinced about that. And next is, what is this funding call? Funding call is otherwise called request for proposal, RFP. That is, the funding agencies will ask for submission on a particular topic at a certain period of time for funding from their site. So that is a funding call. So these are the steps in responding to a funding call. Okay. So first you have to identify, it starts with here, this is the first thing. Identify the needs of the funding agency and focus on that because they are giving you the money. So they should, we should satisfy their needs. So identify the needs and focus. After that, find a prospective funding agency. Okay, then always you should have a general proposal with you along with a budget. So writing about the proposal was already taken in an earlier class. So you should always you should have a general proposal with the budget along with you. Uh, and depending upon the uh, funding agency, they should, first you have to read the guidelines of the funding agency carefully. And depending upon that, you prepare a specific proposal. That is one way. Or sometimes we have to submit a letter of inquiry to the funding agency. And after going through the proposal, if found um, adequate or uh, interesting, they will send you a request for a formal application and then you can prepare a specific proposal. These two steps is, will not be there always. Sometimes you can directly, if the, there is a deadline for that, you can directly send your specific proposal to the funding agency. And always remember to submit before deadline that is very important then after that the agency will review your proposal and they will accept or decline your project sometimes they will send the proposal back to you for after review for corrections if so you, you can make corrections and again submit it and if they accept it you can you uh, before carrying out the project there are some uh, formalities like uh, giving your bank details and uh, writing some uh, agencies will give you some bond you have to sign some papers and all, after all that carry out the project and submit to the final report to the funding agency this is how and it continues and also you can refine the topic by asking yourself what is the importance of this topic what are the relevance of what is the relevance of this topic and uh, what are the methods you are going to use in this what is the type of whether it is a quantitative method or a qualitative study or it is an uh, observation study or it is an analytical study is there any hypothesis and uh, what are the hypotheses there all this has to be uh, you have to ask yourself while writing and that has to be highlighted the next step is finding the correct funding agency so you have to find out the field of uh, your research topic and make a list of all the funding agencies available in that area. Maybe government organizations or there are so many universities which give grant for uh, research work and there are also private agencies and also non-government organizations. So it's a time consuming process but definitely it will 
give you very good benefit in the long run. And you should remember that the most appealing uh, proposal in the world will not get funding from an agency if not sent to a correct agency. That is so the agency selection of funding agency is very important. And the third one is tailoring of the research topic. Okay, tailoring of the research project. Tailoring of your proposal is also very important. Usually the funding agency will, these are the questions the funding agency asks themselves. The first one, who is doing? The who. So you have to convince the funding agency that you are the right person to do this study. You are capable of getting the value of the money they are giving you. So you have to write your expertise in the area and you are also your capabilities. Also you are an, along principal investigator and along with other um, co-investigators, uh, uh, biodata or CVs also needed. And also you have to answer the second who, that is the institution you are working. And you have to tell why this institution that is needed. And what is the novelty of the study and is the topic worth knowing? So you have to tailor your proposal according to this question. And so the one is who and then what and then is how. How you are going to get valid conclusions of your study. So in that you have to write the evaluation plan of the uh, how you are going to get the quality assurance in the writing the objectives and evaluation process of your data collection then your analysis plan everything the methodology you have to write in detail and also your dissemination plan after uh, completion of the study how are you going to uh, disseminate the results of the study to the general public that is also important and with these key elements in mind you make a general proposal and after that, you tailor the proposal according to the need of each funding agency. Now I will tell you the standard elements needed in a grant proposal. The first one is a cover letter. And this cover letter, you have to, the first you have to mention the project. And second is a request for the grant amount. Then you write the novelty and also the importance. Why you are doing and what is the importance of your project. And also you can mention the expected benefit after uh, doing this project. And list the contents of the project. Next is references. Also you write. Uh, in the references don't write too much. It is better to write 2 to 5 references only. And contact details as I already told the who. The funding agency want to know who uh, you are. So write the uh, contact details along with the curriculum meeting. And it is better to uh, get the signature of the dean bar, the head of the institution in the, uh, uh, in the towards the last of your cover letter. Okay. And second comes the uh, title of the project. And then abstract. Then comes the introduction. Then comes literature review. Uh, then project description. Then comes uh, uh, your methodology. Main, uh, main thing coming under project description is your materials and methods. That is methodology. Then comes uh, budget and justification. Then timeline. I was frequently uh, telling about the GAN chart in previous classes also. So that has to be included in this. And then comes the ninth one is references. See in the cover letter you can uh, write up to 5. Only two minimum uh, 2 to 5 references is needed here. But along with the uh, proposal you can write all the references you in, uh, you included in the study. References. All the other steps are included along with the writing proposal. 
I uh, explain only the budget and its justification and how to write a budget in a grant proposal. Writing budget, you should always stick to the guidelines of the funding agency. And it is better to uh, write in detail in a spreadsheet. And the main important headings coming are, one is head of expenditure, that is different categories, maybe recurring uh, category or non-recurring. Recurring in the sense it can be staff. Staff is a recurring one. So staff in the sense it can be example a scientific assistant who is a uh, doctor and also they can you can make a technical assistant uh, a non-medical professional and that that is included under, under item and justification for each one why you are selecting this why you are recruiting this person and what is the basic qualification needed for that category that has to be written in the justification unit is number of items and uh, in the case of staff it will, the unit will be monthly salary and what you have in the unit cost you have to write what is the monthly salary needed and how many months you are so you should be very specific for how many months you need the service of that particular staff example in data collection uh, staff, they may be needed for that particular time only. If you are thinking of the data collection in a, you are trying to finish the data collection in a three month period, the data collection staff will be needed for three months only. So that has to be written here and the quantity and the total um, expenditure for that staff. And in this case, uh, you write the number of staff members who are along with you that is who are working in that same institution and they will be available for no cost basis. If you write that, uh, the credibility of your proposal will be increased by the funding agency. Okay. And in some cases like in uh, analysis uh, plan, it is better to outsource the uh, professional to an agency. That will be much uh, better for the funding agency. And consumables are also a recurring one. Consumables like uh, papers, pen, ink, etc., cartridge. And uh, it's always high chance of acceptance of these consumables by the funding agency. It is also, it has also been written in this. And in the equipment uh, heading, it is non recurring. Okay, equipments like. Uh, um, some laboratory instruments or uh, if it is an endoscope or a laptop the model of that has to be written specifically along with the justification of that with the unit unit cost quantity and total and also you include the maintenance charges of these equipments okay and in any other cost what are the other cost uh, needed like uh, traveling elements then diesel or vehicle charges etc. And in the other cost you can also write the institutional overheads. What is this institutional overheads? That is sometimes the institution will give you space for your work, then uh, travel, they will give vehicle for you, then water, electricity, uh, the charges like that. Okay, mainly institutional overhead had include your space, then water, uh, electricity, vehicle etc. And for that the institution will uh, ask you a nominal amount from yourself. And the usual uh, accepted thing is the institutional overheads come to around 2 percentage, 2 percentage of the uh, total budget. And you should never do something while writing a grant proposal. These are the big no's. Okay, don't do this. One is plagiarism. Never do that. And never uh, claim that there is no previous work existing in this field. It never happens like that. Dismissing existing research, never do that. Better is to work along with the existing research. Thinking traditionally, always everyone wants something different from the existing laws. So you think differently and uh, figure it out. Wanting to do everything. If you want to do everything under that topic, you will end up in doing nothing. Okay, don't do that. And hoping that the reviewers will figure it out. 
it will never happen. You have to write everything in detail and also you have to connect everything. You have to connect the your uh, title with the research question, connect that with the objective, connect it with the methodology, connect it with the analysis plan and also the conclusion and your expected output, the benefit. It is money, no? They are hard earned money, they won't waste. The same thing happens in uh, giving you a grant also. They are giving you money and you have to give something in return to them. Okay, so never do all this. These are the tips of increasing the chances of getting funded. One is read the call. Read the call carefully. Read, read and read. Read and then respond. Okay, so uh, read and understand the guidelines of the funding agency. Then clarify any queries if you have with the funding agency as priority before writing, starting writing the proposal. Be realistic with, with your ideas. Okay. And study successful protocols. Uh, in your, it will be in your library or there will be database of this. So read them. And collaborative network and a multidisciplinary teamwork is highly appreciated. And regarding the proposal, you have to start the writing the proposal very early so that you can uh, present it before your colleagues or any other audience and you can or any experts in this area and get the feedback. Review, review and review. That is very important. Get the feedback. Get a, um, again you make your draft proposal. Re uh, rewrite it. Then finally you will get a gem of that. Then consult a statistician, that is also very important. Solid rationale, you have to highlight the rationale of your study and highlight the knowledge gaps and novelty of the study. Impact of your work, especially in terms of the social benefit. Then also write a very good budget with justification and also administrative parts with the role of each uh, investigator has to be written towards the end. Then only you will get a very good impact so that you can stand among the competitors and you can get the funding very easily. And even if you are doing all this and if you are rejected, there is no need to get desperated because it is a uh, practice you are getting, it is an experience and it is a lesson for you. Okay, grant proposal is different from writing a, a project proposal. So this needs a very good language and also the capacity to write in a, uh, uh, in a way that the readers get uh, impressed by that. That is very much needed. So really experience counts a lot in this. So start writing that. By writing only you will get it. Okay. Good luck.